Good morning and welcome to the Word Line. I am Elder Charmaine Ernest, and I am here this morning with an assignment uh, from the visionary of the Word Line, Elder Barbara Trotter, and uh, to speak and teach for 15 minutes on a specific topic. We've been in the book of Corinthians for a while. Today, I'm doing chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Chapter, and let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. We ask that the Holy Spirit that lives in each one of us would reveal to all of us the things that you have for us today. Open our hearts, open our minds to receive this teaching. Our, um, our teaching today is coming from uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 verses four through 11, and I'm sharing my screen for, for all those to see. And this is a, uh, the topic of this class today is the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And reading from the word, it says in verse four, it says, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Holy Spirit. And then there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord Jesus. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, Jehovah, which worketh all in all. We look at these three scriptures right here and we see diversities, differences, and diversities. However, the original Greek word is the same. But we see that there are different uh, diff diversities means differences or different. There are different gifts. There are different, many of the gifts deals with administration and the gifts some deals with operations. And, but the, the diversity of gifts comes from the same Holy Spirit, the same Lord Jesus, the same God, Jehovah. And we know we, we looking at Father, Son, Holy Spirit right here. And this is the Trinity. And it works all in all. We know that Jehovah works all gifts for all in all. Then in verse seven, it says, but the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every man to profit everybody, to profit with all. Definition, manifestation. Y'all know I'm a definition person. Manifestation means to the exhibition, expression, or actions of the Holy Spirit is given to every man to profit everybody, to help others. When the Holy Spirit gives us these gifts of the Spirit, they are not just for us. They are for the body of Christ. They're for everybody. We're, we're to use them to, so that every man can profit from with all. In verse 8, we're going to start talking about 8 through 11 names these nine uh, gifts of the Spirit. It says, for to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. That's number one. To another, the word of knowledge. Number two, but that is by the same Holy Spirit. Then number three is to another faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Holy Spirit. So everything is coming from the Holy Spirit, okay? So we got four, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, and the gifts of healing. Then we go into... Number five, miracles. To another, the working of miracles. Number six, to another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Number seven, to another, diverse kind of tongues. And that's number seven, eight. And number nine is to another, the interpretation of tongues. So we, that's in verse 10. But in verse 11, it says, but all of these, talking about all nine, Work it that one and the self same Holy Spirit. All of them come from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he, the Holy Spirit, wills. And the brackets are mine. Now, as the Holy Spirit wills, he will give these gifts to those that he chooses. Now, we know that the Holy Spirit has come to live inside of us, he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. This is one of the things that we receive being a new covenant believer, the, the indwelling of the spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you, 
He came with all of the gifts of the spirit. He came with all of the fruit of the spirit and he came with the mind of Christ because he is the spirit of Christ. So he has the mind of Christ. So now let's talk about these nine gifts of the spirit. Number one is the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is God's supernatural wisdom about a person. If you have the gift, God gives you the ability to speak a word of wisdom. Remember, it's just a word. You ain't telling them people their business. You just, you, you're giving a word of wisdom. That's just a little bit. So God's supernatural wisdom about a person. Number two, the word of knowledge. Just a little bit, not all them people. You don't have to give all God's supernatural knowledge to these people. God gives a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. God's supernatural knowledge, God's supernatural wisdom about a person that you speak into their life. Now, the, the third one that goes in line with those two is prophecy. Prophecy is edification, meaning to build someone up, exhortation and comfort. There's something good when you prophesy to a, peop, a person. The, the, there are th these three, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and prophecy work together. Knowledge reveals the problem. Wisdom, uh, when you, when the wisdom part is when you apply God's wisdom to the situation. And the prophecy is when you give the results of obedience to the knowledge and the wisdom. And you show them that if, you know, basically when someone is prophesying, they, they building that person up, they comforting and they're exhorting to them. Now, that's three. Number four, faith. All believers have faith. That's how you got saved. You know, if they, that's how they got saved. Their soul has to be matured. You know, the scripture, through the renewing of your mind to operate in that saving faith. It says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we, as we hear the word and we renew our mind, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that's where you are growing and maturing in your faith. Now that we as believers, we have the faith of Jesus, not just the faith in Jesus. We have the faith of Jesus because the gifts of the spirit, this is one of the gifts of the spirit right here. He gives us faith. So that's his faith. And this faith is different from our salvation faith, the faith we we, we talking about right here. This gift of faith is a supernatural imparting of faith for the purpose of helping those who are struggling in faith to believe. God will give someone a supernatural impartation of faith for them to believe whatever it is that they need to believe. That's one of the gifts. The gifts of healing. This And, and see, this one says gifts with an S. This is plural, glyph, gifts of healing. God, this is God's supernatural power that's released through an individual to bring healing to others as well as themselves. Because all believers, every born again believer can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Not just people who got the gift of healing. All believers can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But some people have the gift of healing. That's the ministry of healing. There's a difference, okay? But we all have the supernatural power that's released through individuals to bring healing to others and to ourselves. The working of miracles. When we talk about the working of miracles, we're talking about God's supernatural intervention of God's power over natural laws. A miracle is different from a healing. A miracle is when somebody is walking on water, okay? A miracle is when uh, uh, Jesus touched that man's ear and grew back after being cut off. You know, I remember somebody was saying that they was praying for somebody to their eyes so they could, they could see the blind man. And, the, and, and they kept praying for the healing, for the healing. And then they asked him, well, what's really, what's wrong with your eyes? He said, well, they took the eyeball out when I was a little boy. And he said, oh, wait, we're not praying for a healing. We're praying for a miracle. Because we need for God to, to put that, that eyeball back in there. And he, we, that is something that we can do. The gift of working of miracles. Discerning the spirits. That's a supernatural ability to discern or recognize spiritual beings, angels, demons, or attitudes and emotions. 
like school spirit, but also attitudes and emotions and people that are being influenced by angels and demons, the discerning of spirits. The other one, not eight, is speaking in tongues, which you, which is what we, when we talk about speaking in tongues right here, we're talking about the operation in the church by some believers. Now, this is different from your personal tongues, which every believer who has been baptized in the Holy Spirit can do, speaking in tongues. That's your prayer language. This is different when someone speaks outly, outward in the church. Then verse nine, it says interpretation of tongues. When someone is operating and speaking in tongues in, an, in a, a congregation operating in that church, there is going to be an interpretation of tongues. That is not a literal translation, word for word. It is an interpretation, and it conveys the thought of what was said in tongues into the known language of that particular congregation. If, they, if you're in a Spanish congregation, the interpretation is going to be in Spanish. If you're in English, it's going to be in English because it's going to be in a language that the people, the known language of that congregation. Now, all believers, that's all nine, all believers can operate in these areas without having the specific gift. Every believer has God's wisdom and knowledge as well as the faith of God. All believing Christians can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We Christians should see the same type of miracles that Jesus did. We should see it happening in our own lives. At times, every member of the body of Christ can prophesy, discern spirits, speak in tongues, and interpret tongues. Yet, not every Christian has these things as a supernatural gift of the spirit in their life. Not every one of them has that as their ministry, but we all can, can function through using those gifts because these are all separate gifts of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit can give more than one gift to one individual. It is the Holy Spirit who decides who receives which gifts, but the last verse of this chapter 12 tells us to covet the best gifts. Now this would imply that our seeking earnestly a certain gift could have some bearing on the Holy Spirit's decision. So my question to you is, which gift do you want to covet from the Holy Spirit? And my presentation has do is done for the day. But right now, if you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to receive these gifts, because if you'll become a born again believer, then these gifts are available to you. If you want that, repeat these life-changing words after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth two things, that Jesus is Lord of my life and that Jehovah God raised Jesus from the dead. I now receive my salvation and my righteousness. I now receive the forgiveness of my sins and eternal life. I now receive my divine mental health and my divine physical health. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. And if you said those words for the very first time, you just got saved. The scripture says that the angels in heaven are rejoicing every time a person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior. There's a party going on in heaven, and we love to party. You know, we from New Orleans, so we love to party, because ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party, because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party, because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. So we're going to rejoice with you. And this, this word line is Monday through Friday. 7.45 Central Time, 8.45 Eastern Time for 15 minutes included in your devotional. And we, they, they, it's always out there. Just go and, and get on. And I thank uh, Elder Robert Trotter for this opportunity. And y'all have a blessed day in the Lord. Bye-bye.